Hello everybody and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five tools slash technologies that you need to know to be an effective software engineer. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because back in the summer, I started working for Microsoft as a software engineer intern. Now, while I was there, I realized really quickly that there was a lot more to software engineering than just knowing how to code. I felt pretty confident in my ability problem solving, writing code and doing all of that, but there was a ton of tools and technologies that I didn't know how to use and that really limited me in my first few weeks. I had to pick those things up. I was asking a lot of questions and well, it would have just been a lot better if I knew those before I started working there. So I figured I can make this video, kind of share that information with you guys and then maybe you can be ahead when you go to your next job. So anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and talk about five tools slash technologies that you need to know to be an effective software engineer. So I'll start by mentioning that a lot of the tools I'm going to talk about here are pretty broad, and there's definitely a lot that you could learn about each of these tools. Now, I just want to make the point that it's not super important that you know everything. It's just about having kind of a basic fundamental understanding and being able to understand how that tool works, maybe have a conversation with someone about it, and just being able to use it with a relative degree of effectiveness. Now, if you're like me, you'll probably learn a lot of these tools just by watching YouTube videos or looking at other resources. And well, for me personally, I like to keep track of kind of the best videos and resources that I've found so I can visit them later on. Now, this is pretty difficult for me. I don't like cluttering my bookmark bar and all of that stuff. But fortunately, the sponsor of this video, which is Proteus, has a solution for us. Proteus is a free Chrome extension that lets you track your time learning on YouTube. Proteus makes it easy to find interesting and relevant classes that are taught by the best instructors. You can filter the Proteus library for classes based on skill, difficulty, and category. And if you're the first one to find a great class, then feel free to add it to the library yourself. Proteus lets you set daily learning goals, track your learning progress, and provides analytics and insights into your educational journey. Similar to Spotify playlists, users can packet classes together as a course for other students to follow along and learn an entire curriculum. Proteus also lets you earn hours towards different pro degrees in your topics and fields of interest. Once you've earned a pro degree, you can add it to your LinkedIn profile and show the time you've spent mastering that topic. Get started by downloading the free Proteus Chrome extension from the link in the description. But if you're not a Chrome user, then feel free to check out the Proteus web app from proteus.co or again, the links in the description. So the first and in my opinion, the most important tool that you need to know is a version control software or system like Git and GitHub. Now, I think this is pretty obvious why you need to know this, but if you're working in a team of more than one person, so you're not just working alone, chances are you're going to be using Git or GitHub or some other kind of version control software, and you're going to need to sync your local changes, so the stuff you're actually writing and developing on your computer with, well, the company code base or the other person's code base, and you're going to need a way to take other people's changes and, well, update that on your local code base. So it's very important that you have a deep understanding of how both Git and GitHub work, assuming you're using that software, and that you can not only perform commands from the command line on your keyboard, but you also can use the user interface on the GitHub website. Now, the reason I've separated these two things out is because as many people don't know, Git and GitHub are two separate things. Yes, they work very closely together. They're very deeply integrated, but Git is kind of the back end actual version control software. It's what's running on your computer. It's what's checking for changes in your repository. It's what's going to do all of kind of the hard lifting when you do say like a rebase command, right? That's what Git will actually do. It's kind of more in the back end. That's the way I like to describe it. Whereas GitHub is actually the front end user interface. It's the famous website that we all know about. So you need to know how to use both of them. You have to know how to use use the basic git commands. So how do I commit something? How do I push something up to the remote repository? How do I pull something down? What does a rebase command do? How do I make a new branch? All of these different things. And then you also have to know how to use the GitHub website. So how do I do a code review? Okay, oh, this is how I approve changes. This is how I merge something into the branch all of those different things. So I think I've gone on on this long enough that the point is that this is very important and really make sure of all of the tools on the list, you have this down and you have a deep understanding of how Git and GitHub work. So the second thing on my list here is going to be Linux commands and generally Mac and Windows commands as well. 
As a software engineer, there's a lot of situations where you are not going to be able to use a graphical user interface, and you're going to have to be comfortable navigating a file system using just the command line. Even if we take an example where you're on Windows or on Mac, there is again many situations where even though you might have a graphical user interface, the tool that you're interacting with or using is only available from the command line. Now, I'm not saying you have to be an absolute pro and you never use a graphical user interface. You just have to know how to navigate a file system, how to copy a file, move a file, edit a file, do these basic things that are very common and that you'll have to do a lot if you are ever in the situation where you don't have that graphical user interface or you can't use it for what you're doing. Now, this will be especially important if you're someone who's working on any kind of web development, if you're going to be interacting with any servers, uh, if you're needing to SSH into, say, a remote machine, if you're going to be working with a lot of machine learning related stuff or really specific pieces of technology or programs. I can tell you firsthand, especially in Python, there's a lot of stuff that only runs on Linux, right? It just doesn't work on Mac or it doesn't work on Windows. So even having the ability to, say, boot up a virtual machine and get in and just really quickly quickly kind of spin up an Ubuntu box or some kind of Linux box and start working on that is really important. And I can tell you firsthand at Microsoft, almost all of my coworkers had access to a virtual machine that was running Linux, and that never had a graphical user interface on it. It was simply command line, and they would use that when they needed to test really specific proprietary pieces of software. And well, if they didn't know how to use Linux, it was going to be a huge pain every time they needed to go in there when they're looking up, hey, how do I copy a file? How do I edit a file? How do I save something? Just some basic things that you should know. And I would highly recommend you have a fundamental understanding of how to navigate a file system and perform some basic commands related to permissions on Linux, Mac, and Windows. The third thing I have on my list is using a debugger, or I guess we could call this debugging. But what I mean by this is understanding how to use a debugging tool and understanding how to go about debugging a complex program. Now, this is really important because in a lot of situations, especially if you're working for a company, you're going to be dealing with files that have, you know, tens of thousands of lines, or you're going to be dealing with tens of thousands of different files. And it's just not going to be viable to be able to use a print debugging kind of style when you're debugging. Sure, you could use that for maybe some small things, but you're going to have to know how to use a debugger, which means you have to know how to place breakpoints, what stepping over, stepping out of, and stepping into does, and kind of just the general process and strategy of how you debug a program. Now, it's hard for me to give you that strategy because, of course, that's going to be specific to what you're doing. But my point is just that you're going to be working in huge code bases with lots of files, lots of lines, and just tons of stuff going on. So being able to isolate your problem, first of all, is the most important thing. So you have to kind of practice debugging and understand how to use those tools. Now, I do actually have a video on my channel that talks about how to use a debugger. It goes through the VS Code debugger, which most of you might find useful. So I will link that down below. But I don't think I can talk about this much more. It just is important to understand how to debug, and you should know how to use a professional debugger to be an effective software engineer. So the fourth thing I have on my list here is IDE slash IDE features. Now, what I mean by this is really just how to set up a coding environment for yourself and how to take advantage of some of the cool features that are in IDEs. Now, some features I can think of off of the top of my head that I think you should use are things like formatters, debuggers, find and replace, refactor, duplicate line, just all these kind of different things. I think you're getting the point. Now, of course, this is important because you want to be as fast as possible when you're writing code. And if you can use these cool tools, well, it's going to be really useful. Now, especially if you're working in a large code base, understanding how to navigate a ton of different files and go to, say, the definitions of different functions or methods or classes is really important. So just having a good understanding of the development environment that you're using and being able to take advantage of a lot of these core tools that are involved in these IDEs is really important. Now, I'll just specify quickly here that I'm not really recommending using an IDE if you're just an absolute beginner and you're still learning how to code. This is more of a recommendation for people that really want to become software engineers that already have the basics of coding down and that are totally fine with getting a bit of aid from the computer. Another thing I'll quickly mention here is using a really good IntelliSense that will save you a significant amount of time. And well, that's all I can really talk about for this section. Just know how to use an IDE, know about the features that are in it and take advantage of them.
So the last item I have on my list here is networking basics. Now, what I mean by this is just having a really basic understanding of how computers communicate with each other, how maybe a distributed system might work, why you may need to use, say, asynchronous programming or multiple threads due to the networking operations that you're using. And then, of course, having an understanding of HTTP protocols and, you know, maybe the difference between something like a GET request and a po post request or how you could send those kind of requests or send a response from code. Now, of course, there may be a set of software engineers that don't actually need to understand this, but I would say in a lot of situations, having this knowledge is really good. And it just allows you to understand a lot more about what's happening in a system if you have kind of that underlying knowledge and information about how networking actually works. Again, I'm no networking pro, you know, I can't talk about this a ton, but I found, especially when I'm writing programs that deal with any kind of networking related thing, just having that little bit of knowledge has helped me a ton and made it a lot more more clear into why I was writing specific blocks of code, you know, kind of based on that understanding. So with that being said, that is all I wanted to share with you. So do you guys agree with me? Did I miss anything? Are any of these tools something that maybe you don't need to know? Please do let me know in the comments down below. And with that being said, if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, I will see you again in another YouTube video.